Hello, welcome to part six of database design made easy. And it is now time to cover elementary key normal form. Elementary key normal form is in between third normal form and boy score normal form. So to understand elementary key normal form, let's first review those other two. Remember, third normal form means all non-key columns must depend on the key the whole key and nothing but the key. But there is no restriction on key columns. They can do whatever they like. Boy's code normal form does away with that restriction. All columns must depend on the key, the whole key and nothing but the key. But as we saw in the previous video, Boy's code normal form is not always possible to achieve. And that is where elementary key normal form comes in. Elementary key normal form is always possible. This is guaranteed. And the rule for elementary key normal form is that all non-elementary key columns must depend on the key, the whole key, and nothing but the key. So we still have an exception for columns that are part of an elementary key, but not for columns that are part of any non-elementary key. So then, of course, the question becomes, what exactly is an elementary key? Remember, we know what a candidate key is. That is a column or combination of columns where all other columns in the table depend on it. An elementary key is the same. All other columns must depend on the key, but there is the additional requirement that none of those can be a cheater functional dependency. So let's look at an example. Here we see an example of another technical conference, but this is not a one day conference in one place. It is a traveling conference. So on Monday, the conference is in London, on Tuesday in Manchester, and on Wednesday in one of those typical British towns that has way more letters than you ever pronounce, Leicester. Um, in this schedule for the conference, there are two quite obvious functional dependencies. The combination of day and speaker determines the city. Hugo cannot be on in London and in Manchester at the same time on Monday. So that is a quite obvious um, functional dependency. But day and speaker also determines the topic. Hugo Cornelis can speak about execution plans on Monday, but then he cannot talk about another topic on that same day. He can talk about another topic on another day, for instance, query store on Tuesday, but on one day and one speaker there's only a single topic. Now because the combination day and speaker determines all other columns in the table, it is a candidate key. However, in this specific case there is an additional functional uh, uh, de uh, dependency, namely that day by itself determines the city. Why is that? Because, well, of course, in theory, it could be possible that this conference is a three-day conference taking place in three cities at the same time, where speakers travel from city to city. Uh, but that's not the case here. Here, the entire conference is in London on Monday, and then it packs up and the entire conference moves to Manchester on Tuesday. So every day, it is just one single city. And that means that the dependency uh, uh, that city is determined by day and speaker combined is a cheater functional dependency. It is still relevant because it allows us to define that candidate key, but it is important for elementary key normal form to realize this is a cheater. Now, for a conference organized like this, a traveling conference, it is, of course, in theory, possible to stay for two days in London. London is a large city. Perhaps there are enough attendees that we can warrant staying there for two days. But we don't. The organization of this conference only stays for one day in each city. So there is also a functional dependency where a city determines the day. Given that functional dependency, we can now derive an extra key and some extra functional dependencies. They are implied by all the functional dependencies that we logically have seen. There is one, there is more functional dependencies. The combination of city and speaker determines the day. Well, that is obvious. It's cheater functional dependency because 
city by itself already determines the day, but the combination city and speaker also has to determine the topic. Remember, the combination of day and speaker determines the topic, and a city by itself determines the day. So give me any city and any speaker, and because the city determines the day, I can give you the day and the speaker, and the day and the speaker determines the topic, so hence, of course, the city and the speaker determines the topic. Due to these derived dependencies, or implied dependencies, I should say, there is also an implied key on speaker and city. Now we have overlapping keys, and that means that we should check for boy's court normal form, and in this case you will find that boy's court normal form is not satisfied because uh, city and day are both part uh, dependent on part of a, uh, a candidate key. But we are not talking about boy's court normal form now, we are now talking about elementary key normal form. So here what we want to know is do all the non-elementary key columns depend on the key, the whole key and nothing but the key. And that means we first need to determine which keys are elementary and which are not. Well, they are both not elementary. Why not? Well, both of them implement at least one cheater functional dependency. The key on day and speaker implements the cheater functional dependency that day and speaker determines the city. And the key on city and speaker determines the fun uh, cheater functional dependency to day. So both are not elementary keys. That means that none of the columns in this table is part of an elementary key. And all of them must depend on the key, the whole key, and nothing but the key. Day and city do not depend on the key, the whole key, and nothing but the key, because day and city have this one-to-one -one relationship. So that means that for those two functional dependencies, as always when we found a violation of a normal form, we are going to create a new table for those columns. And given the functional dependencies, there are obviously two candidate keys on this table. Now, as always, when we create such a new table, we know that the key column must remain in the original uh, table, but the non-key columns can be removed. <laughs> but there are two keys in this case, so we once more have the choice. We can keep day and remove city, or we can keep city and remove day. Let's in this case choose to remove the day column. Now, there is a key on top of the day column, so we cannot just remove that column. Then we will be left with a key on speaker only, and that is violated by the valid data that we see in the example. So we cannot just remove that column. We first need to check whether we can remove the key. And remember, the key on speaker and city was the implied key. The key on day and speaker was the logical key. But in this case, not, we know that not only city determines day, but day also determines city. And because day determines city, the, the key of on speaker and city, which was an implied key, but that key in turn implies the key on day and speaker. Because there is a key on speaker and city, and because they determine city, it is impossible to violate the key on they and speaker. So it is safe to remove this candidate key, and at that point we can safely remove the day column too. And now we have a new schema that, satisfied, that does satisfy elementary key normal form, and for the record also satisfies boy's court normal form. Now, you may wonder what exactly is the point of elementary key normal form. And to understand that, let's look back at an example from the previous video. Remember this schedule we had for, in this case, a one-day conference, where we knew based on the logical, uh, our log uh, the logical knowledge of the universe of discourse, we knew that Track and session number determine all other columns, and room and start time combined also determine all other columns. So we had those two candidate keys. Like I said in the last video, this is the generic uh, schema for such a schedule without additional business keys. This is just 
reality dictating that these uh, keys have to exist. However, in our case, there was one additional requirement, and that is that track by itself determines the room. You may recall that this was the example where boy's court number form was not possible. In this specific case, because track determines the room, we can now also um, uh, see that there is an implied extra key on track and start time. I covered that all in the previous video. It's the same logic here. So we have this additional key as well, which is implied by the key on room and start time and the business rule that track determines room. Anyway, because track determines room, we also see that there are two cheater functional dependencies. The functional dependency track and session number determines room, which is implied by the key, is, is implemented by the key, is a cheater because track by itself determines the room. And the same goes for the key on track and start time. That also implements a cheater functional dependency. So those two keys are both not elementary. However, the key on room and start time only implements non-cheater functional dependencies. All of those functional dependencies are very real functional dependencies. There's no cheating going on. So the key on room and start time is an elementary key. Now, if we want to check elementary key normal form, we must look for columns that depend on part of a key. Well, the only column that given the functional dependencies can depend on part of a key is, of course, because of the functional dependency that track determines room. So room by itself does depend on part of a key. But it's part of an elementary key. An elementary key normal form allows exceptions for columns that are part of an elementary key normal form. So in the previous video, we concluded that this design is not in boy scott normal form. We cannot get it in boy scott normal form, so it is third normal form. Now we see that it is actually elementary key normal form. And of course, that does not mean that we now suddenly can call it a better design. The possible update anomalies that were allowed by this design are still allowed now that we call it elementary key normal form. Those are impossible to avoid unless we use this trick with the extra table and the weird foreign key. Now the table on the left is fully elementary key normal form. It's not boys called normal form, but we took our specific measures to prevent update anomalies. The table on the right, if you ignore the technical extra key that is not really a key but needed for the foreign key, then the table on the right is also in elementary key normal form and even in boy's code normal form. So now we have a design where all tables are in elementary key normal form or better. And as you know, if all ele tables are in elementary key normal form or better, then the data model is in elementary key normal form. The data model of that example will never be boy's code normal form. Like I said, in that combination of business rules, BCNF is impossible. But now we know that it is in elementary key normal form. Does that add much? Well, we have the same design that we had when we called it third normal form. So it is more of an academic difference than a practical difference. But it does show that the design that we created in the previous uh, uh, module N that we showed again here is in fact the most correct design we can get. So yeah, it was a rather short module, but that is all I can tell you about elementary key normal form. In the next video, which is due in about a month if everything goes according to plan, I will talk about fourth normal form, and that is Finally, a normal form that doesn't depend on functional dependencies. We're going to look at something very, well, very different is perhaps not the right word, but at something different. That should happen in about a month. If you cannot wait that long, you can, of course, go to Plural site where I have a seven and a half hour course 
on relational database design that covers all of this and more, including a method that helps you find all functional dependencies without error if you apply it correctly. Until then, I thank you for your attention. Please like, subscribe or comment as always. And please see me again next month about fourth normal form. My name is Hugo Canelis. Goodbye.